Intel's upcoming CPU is even worse than we thought. NVIDIA is fighting back. NVIDIA's new monster GPU and AMD is actually doing it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I apologize if this video ends up coming out at a weird time and just the fact that I've been doing a ton of talking head videos lately. I just got back from my trip and it's way too late to do a more normal style video. With that said, I should be back to my normal style this Wednesday. Either way, let's get right to our first story. If you saw my recent video, you know that Intel's new special edition 14,900K S model CPU was recently leaked. More specifically, we actually got a chance to check out the retail box as well as get an idea of price. And let's just say that did not look good. Well, it's actually even worse as at least one person was able to pick up the new CPU and test it out. And as you can see right down here, while it was capable of hitting 6.2 gigahertz on 3P cores, well, possibly 3P cores, you can see this is actually just done in the BIOS. And as Tom's Hardware mentions, it says it's not clear if all three cores will operate at 6.2 gigahertz at the same time, since Intel usually has a dual core boost, not a tri-core boost. Regardless, it was also able to hit 5.9 gigahertz across all 8P cores. So not bad at all. The issue is how it's able to do this. Well, the 5.9 gigahertz wasn't all that bad. 1.413 volts, not terrible at all, but getting that rated 6.2 gigahertz boost clock, as you can see up here, it required nearly 1.5 volts. And for anyone who understands voltages for CPUs, you know that that's really bad. We're talking so bad that it could potentially shorten the lifespan of your CPU. Not only that, but as they also state right down here, that's definitely gonna take some wild cooling as 1.5 volts is gonna take a ton of power draw. Specifically, at least according to one rumor, we could potentially be looking at upwards of 410 watts for this single CPU. That is wild. Once again, this more or less proves that the 14,900K S looks like a horrible CPU. Of course, we will wanna wait until the chip actually releases. From what I understand, there is potentially a BIOS update that should be coming out for the new CPU, and maybe that will help with some of these voltages and things like that, but at least for now, it's not looking good. And next up for today, not too long ago, I actually covered this story about a new open source software that would effectively allow AMD GPUs to run on NVIDIA CUDA. For those who don't know, one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, NVIDIA is so popular in artificial intelligence, they effectively are a monopoly at this point, we're talking a massive chunk of the market. And one of the main reasons they're able to do that is CUDA. This is basically a software suite that NVIDIA has been working on for years at this point that enables developers to do a ton of stuff with AI, a ton of software, use it, require it, things like that. And that's one of the main issues with other competitors coming in and challenging NVIDIA's reign. So far, AMD has been working on their own ROCM stack, but it's really nothing compared to CUDA. In comes this new software called ZLUDA, which effectively allows you to run CUDA on AMD GPUs and without having to recompile anything or anything like that. So it just works. And as you can see, and as I discussed then, it works fairly well. AMD GPUs have fairly decent performance with this overlay. Well, as you might expect, NVIDIA's not too happy about that. And what they've done is effectively ensure that they ban it. As you can see right here, it says NVIDIA has banned running CUDA-based software on other hardware platforms using translation layers. And it's this translation layer that allows the LUDA to work on AMD GPUs, or at least it allows CUDA to work on AMD GPUs because it's effectively a layer in between the two that translates CUDA into what AMD can work with. And in the licensing for NVIDIA's CUDA, this has not been allowed actually since 2021, but that's specifically the licensing terms that are listed online. The actual agreement that you get when you install the software doesn't include any wording having to do with banning translation layers. That is, 
until now. As you can see right here, it says this language has been added to the EULA that's included when installing CUDA 11.6 and newer versions. And as they state, it says the restriction appears to be designed to prevent initiatives like Zludo, which both Intel and AMD have recently participated, and perhaps more critically, some Chinese GPU makers from utilizing CUDA code with translation layers. Basically, this could have been one of the reasons why AMD stopped funding Zludo not too long ago, and they ultimately, for anyone who followed that story on it, they ultimately ended up releasing it open source, but a little while before that, AMD had cut their funding. And like I said, this could have been one of the reasons why. Simply put, all NVIDIA has to do is put in their software that you can't use translation layers. Now, I'm obviously not a lawyer or anything like that. I don't really know for sure the legalities of all of this, but it definitely is a bummer for anyone who was hoping to use CUDA on AMD GPUs. Time will tell if this ends up completely stopping things like Zluda that's out there. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely not good news for AMD GPU owners. And next up, we just got some new information on Nvidia's upcoming Monster Blackwell GPU. For those who haven't seen it, not too long ago, Nvidia released this roadmap that includes their B100 GPU, B obviously being for Blackwell, and this is set to replace their H100 Hopper Accelerator. Well, as you can see here, there's no mention of a B200 like you saw with the H200. Well, it looks like it is in fact coming, as Dell's COO recently discussed it, and it looks set to be one absolute monster. As you can see right here, it says, quote, we're excited about what happens at the B100 and the B200, and we think that's where there's actually another opportunity to distinguish engineering confidence. Our characterization in the thermal side, you really don't need direct liquid cooling to get to the energy density of 1,000 watts per GPU. That happens next year with the B200. The opportunity for us really to showcase our engineering, anyway, that's basically it right there. They effectively confirmed that Nvidia is planning to release a B200 GPU. Not only that, but this bad boy could require upwards of a thousand watts. Obviously, when we're talking Intel's 14,900KS, getting 410 watts is horrible, obviously because AMD has something significantly close in terms of performance, but doesn't require anywhere near that power draw. On the other hand, Nvidia, when they release stuff with wild power draws, it's usually proportionally powerful to said power draw. Meaning, if this bad boy pulls in a thousand watts, it should end up being an absolute beast of a GPU. And of course, don't forget that Nvidia's own CEO recently stated that their upcoming Blackwell GPUs are, you know, going to be extremely powerful. I don't really remember the exact wording, but it basically meant that it was going to be really powerful. And this definitely looks to be the case. And lastly for today, AMD just teased something massive for their Radeon GPUs. This story originally comes from a new video by No Priors, where AMD's own CTO, Mark Papermaster, actually said something pretty wild. In it, he states, quote, we've just completed AI enabling our entire portfolios to cloud edge PCs or embedded devices or gaming devices. We're enabling our gaming devices to upscale using AI in 2020. Four. You heard that right. It was that last little bit right here. It says, we're enabling our gaming devices to upscale using AI, meaning FSR could soon use AI similar to NVIDIA's DLSS and Intel's XESS. And that would obviously make for a pretty wild departure from what AMD's been saying so far. According to a lot of what they've said, you really don't need AI for upscaling, but I will say from quite a bit of tests that I've seen, NVIDIA's DLSS simply looks better than AMD's FSR, but one of the benefits of FSR is that it's been able to work across a wide range of GPUs, both AMD and NVIDIA. And while it is interesting to see that AMD may soon be going the AI route, my one question is whether they'll be able to make it work with NVIDIA GPUs as well as AMD GPUs. Obviously, when you're using AI, you have to use the special cores that are in AMD and NVIDIA GPUs specifically for matrix operations. And the way AMD does it is a bit different from NVIDIA. So I'm really not sure, even if AMD wanted to, whether they could actually enable something like this 
on NVIDIA's GPUs. Maybe it's going to be sort of a separate version of FSR, sort of like how they've done with frame generation, where you have one that only works with certain AMD GPUs, but then you have another one that effectively works with a ton of AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Or maybe they actually figured out how to do both. And let's just say that would seriously hurt NVIDIA. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD potentially using AI for upscaling? Is this a good move or does it really just prove that they were wrong all along? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.